What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? How you guys doing today? We're back with another episode of the Mindless Horror Podcast. Back with Sammy again. Yes, I'm, I'm happy to be back. Week two. Week two, man, and going. So today we're going to talk about um, Happy Death Day to You, the new trailer that dropped this week. I mean, if you saw Halloween in theaters, you already saw the trailer, but it's out to the public now. Yeah, if you're, if you're weak like me, you just saw it five minutes ago. Five minutes ago. But uh, it, that is going to be leading us into our next topic, which is going to be the top, <clears throat> you know, the movies that made 2018 horror. Um, so let's get started. What did you think, first off? You haven't seen Happy Death Day 1, right? No, I didn't see Happy Death Day 1. I, I saw the trailer for it when it came out, whenever that was, and I was like, oh, I don't know if I want to watch that movie. I feel like it's going to be repetitive. It's like Groundhog's Day. That's exactly what it's like, a horror version of Groundhog's Day. But we'll watch it. It's a good movie. I highly suggest it. Yeah. I mean, after watching the trailer, I kind of want to watch it now. Yeah. Well, that's the second movie. I think it's coming out yeah, Valentine's Day. So. Yeah. Um, but I may have to watch the first one now just because the first – actually, the preview made the first one look pretty good. So Yeah, it was good. I, I really enjoyed it. It was one of those movies where it, – it's with Blumhouse. It's like a hit or miss usually. And it's one of those movies where I walked in like, man, this might suck. Uh, because the first time I ever had an experience with it was through the maze at Halloween Horror Nights. Yeah, definitely. When they did uh, The Horrors of Blumhouse. So now, uh, when I finally got a chance to watch it, I was actually really into it. So let's, I'm hoping this the sequel is pretty good. I mean, it's looking like it's going to affect more people than just the, the main lady this time around. Which yeah, it looks like, yeah, it looks like it's going to affect like her friends. Yeah. I have to say, when that 50 track dropped, I was like, ooh. In the club, dog. In the club. That's, That's a, a banger. Good. That is a banger. So... I'm very much looking forward to that, um, and it looks like she's reliving the same day again um, from the previous movie, but now, like I said, her friends are affected to it, her boyfriend's affected into it, uh, there's a new killer in town, so we're going to find out who the new killer is. I think it's crazy that she has to die. Yeah. So if she doesn't die, the death, the day doesn't restart. Yeah. So, like, let's just say the day's going strong, and the killer gets someone else that she actually enjoys, she has to go out of her way and kill herself now. Yeah. Because that's actually what happens in the, in the last movie, which we'll watch. You'll see that she sacrifices herself just because, you know, she doesn't want some person to die. But yeah. it, it's pretty good. Um, and that's going to transition us into other horror movies that came out in 2018. Um, and we had a lot of good ones this year. This was actually a really good year for horror. Um, mainly because some of the big yeah. hits came out that surprised us in the box office surprised us in just general of overall how the movie was and stuff and you've only seen two of these movies yeah over the li- over the list we just went over i only saw so, two of them. Uh, i'm just gonna go down the list uh starting with halloween the 2018 version you have not seen that yet no i really wanted to see it too but every time i tried to go say it with friends because i wasn't gonna watch it alone because that wasn't gonna happen <laughs> that was gonna be you're never alone when you're at the theater though. yeah yeah but i, I would have been alone but you're not. Yeah, but there was other people in the room. There was another like at least if I have like a partner and Michael Myers shows up in the theater, I got a homie. <laughs> you're not going down alone. Yeah. Um that one was really good. I enjoyed Halloween. Halloween was probably my favorite out of the the year uh for this year of horror. Uh mainly because it was the return of Michael Myers and it's been like the first time in like I think 10, maybe 15 years. Maybe even longer uh since we've seen Michael Myers on screen. And that was cool. On top of that, they 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 took everything out of slate and they just it went straight from one the first Halloween movie to this one. So I like that a lot. Yeah, that uh, that's what was really cool. Like the idea that they were rebooting the franchise. I think it was also cool just to see uh, Jamie Lee Curtis reprise, you know, her, role. reprise her role yeah. and just to see the like, the effects on her family. Even in the trailer, you could see the effects. Yeah, and I can only imagine how much better it was because of all the reviews I read. I heard she was phenomenal in the in the role. Like they could have just if if they would have made a movie just about her and maybe just a little bit about her family and took out a little bit of the superfluous uh, you know items in there. Yeah, it, it would have been a better movie. Yeah, it was it was really good. I, I really enjoyed it, and, and and she you know she's always phenomenal in anything she's in. Yeah, I love her in Freaky Friday. Freaky Friday is good. She's been in so much uh, uh, in movies and stuff. Her mom, of course, iconic for Psycho. Yeah, that's super crazy. That that's what her mom's known for. And she's known for and Halloween. Then, yeah, and she's known now for Halloween. Yeah, so I mean, they're 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 gonna go down in history as two of the best leading ladies in horror. Yeah. Um. Her mom, of course, is in the infamous shower scene in Psycho, which will go down in history as one of the greatest deaths in a horror movie. Yeah, I mean, and it was really cool. I think we were watching it the other day, the delete, one of the deleted scenes. Yeah. Where it kind of like looked like that Psycho scene. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, 
And then, of course, Jamie Lee Curtis is going to go down as, you know, Jamie Lee Curtis, Laurie Strode, uh, the girl who survived Michael Myers is, of course, uh, you know, Raph. <laughs> yeah. So that that's that's always cool to see. Um, the next movie we're going to talk about, uh, Quiet Place. That one was interesting. Yeah, I definitely did not want to see it. It looked tremendous by the trailer. Yeah. Like, super good. It, I just know I was going to be super uncomfortable because I hate being in quiet. In quiet, yeah. I mean, it's quiet for, like, I want to say, like, the first half. And then they start making a little bit of noise. I saw it in Dolby. <laughs> oh wow! Uh, I, I didn't realize what I what my what, what my mistake was until I and I, I was in the theater. But it actually it actually was a lot better experience. You would you know you would think it wouldn't be, but it was a way better experience because every time it got loud, the theater was loud. So yeah, it, it was awesome. Um, John Krasinski though, I, I I've just been a fan of his since The Office. Yeah, he directed the movie too. He right? directed and co-wrote it. Wow. So uh, I know he's working on the sequel, and he said right now that the quiet place for the for the sequel right now that he's writing doesn't feel like a sequel. Like, it doesn't feel like a sequel to the first movie, so that's kind of good. Yeah, because based upon the way, from what I understand, the movie ended, without giving spoilers, it, there's not really a need for a sequel. I mean, they set it up only because, uh, well, in the movie, you find out that uh, they only know of three monsters. Oh. Creatures, at least, uh, that that are you know in their area, yeah. they only know of three, and uh, basically at the end, a little bit of a spoiler, they find out how to kill the monster, you know. Yeah. And so, in the way they they kind of end it, they kind of read it, end it like, uh, uh, what's her name, uh, his wife Emily Blunt, yeah. and and like her daughter in the movie, they end it like they're about ready to, uh, like get into, they know what to do now, they're about ready to fight, and they hear the other ones coming, and then as they as you hear him coming, it just ends. Yeah. So, I mean, they kind of set it up for a sequel, and at the same time, they kind of didn't. One of the cringiest moments, though, is when Emily, Emily Blunt's going downstairs, and she's trying to be quiet. She's pregnant by the in the movie, by the yeah. way. And she goes downstairs and hits a nail. And she has to be quiet, dude, and it's, like, deep in her fucking foot. Oh, I would have lost it. Yeah, so that that's just... I'm cringing just thinking about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, one of the next movies that kind of hit out of nowhere was Hereditary, which I am holding right now on DVD. This movie was produced by the uh, independent company film film company A24, uh, and they've been kind of on a roll as of late. Uh, Disaster Artist, uh, Hereditary, they, they've been doing a lot of independent kind of movies and they're making a name for themselves. It's going to be probably the next big thing in, uh, in movies, but... Uh, yeah, dude, Hereditary kind of just threw me off guard in a way. It was just kind of like one of those movies where, like, you weren't – you're like, oh, okay. I don't remember watching any trailers for it, and uh, when I went in to watch it, I didn't know what it was about, so I kind of went in blind, which I kind of want to start doing with some movies. But uh, I went in blind, and it was just a trippy movie overall, man. Yeah, I heard it wasn't – it got scary maybe the last, like, 5 to 15 minutes, but I heard it just kind of had, like, a nice gradual setup. Yeah. Throughout the entire movie. So you start seeing stuff as it goes. So what happens is in the movie, uh, the the mom who, who plays like the main main lady in there, her mom ends up getting, you know, she dies. She just, oh, I, don't wow. know, I don't know how she dies, but I think she dies of like old age or, or health or something like that. Uh, and then you start seeing a lot of freaky stuff go on. She, you know, she they're having her funeral and you see all these random people that uh, her family didn't know anybody, you know. So you see all these random people and stuff like that, but... In the end, you're starting to see, like, her mom was a, a cult leader. Oh, wow. Yeah, and uh, all these people are part of the cult, and their their mission in life was to uh, have – they wanted to have – so they, 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 they worship this, like, god who's like, a, who's like a man and stuff like that. And, and in order for it to, uh, you know, for someone to take over, they need another guy to take over to kind of be a ruler. Well, the when when the son was born, the you know the main lady didn't want her mom anything to have anything to do with that son. But when the daughter was born, she was all over the daughter and grew a strong connection with the daughter. But the problem with that was that she needed she she knew she was the chosen one, but she needed a guy to be, you know, the leader. So uh, what happens is one night, uh, the the brother takes his little sister out to the party with him, and they come home. She has an allergic reaction. And they're on their way home and stuff, and then she sticks her head out the window, and he decapitates her on accident. She ends up dying. Ooh. Yeah. 
And it's one of those things where like he realized what he happened, but he was such in shock that when it happened, he just drove away and didn't even worry about it. And he, when he got home the next morning, his mom went outside and she saw like blood everywhere and her decapitated body just right there. And it's just like so. Then it starts like a whole trail of events of like you see a lot of hauntings and entities like coming at them, like the the demon and stuff haunting them and stuff. And eventually, what happens was the mom gets possessed, uh, ends up cutting off her own head. I don't know why. I think that's part of the ritual and stuff like that. And then the sister sister's soul gets uh, put into the brother's body, and she ends up becoming like the new leader. It's it's a fucking weird and confusing ending. That's super weird. But you'd have to actually watch it to be like, okay, I kind of understand it a little bit more. Yeah. Explaining it, it's different than actually watching it, but yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, it, it wasn't until like the last about. 20, 25 minutes of the movie where you actually are like, oh, okay, this is starting to get, like, all this story led up to this. I get this now. Mm. Um, so that was, that was a really good movie. Uh, another good movie that came out this year, or it was okay to most people, was The Nun. Yeah. Uh, didn't want to watch that. Uh, so I went to go see it, and it was when I first got my AMC A-list stubs program. Yeah. And it, it was pretty good. It wasn't too bad. Um, I enjoyed it. Uh, a lot of people, I can see why a lot of people had problems with it, but, um, for the most part, the scares were good. Um, the story, it was pretty good and it tied into the first Conjuring movie, which was pretty cool. Um, so yeah, I enjoyed it. It was, it wasn't, it was a good spinoff, but it, a lot of people didn't like it. Yeah. I, I had friends that were very disappointed, disappointed and yeah. they thought it, some of the moments in the movie were just not needed. Yeah, there were some moments where they were just unnecessary moments, and then there was other moments where it's just like, okay, this is pretty good. But uh, I, I, I enjoyed it for the most part, and yeah. Yeah, I, I didn't want to see it. Like, if I was going to watch it, I, I would have had to go on with a few friends to see that one. That's definitely a movie I would have not watched alone because yeah. I would have just been petrified. Oh, yeah. Uh, Suspiria, that's been one movie neither of us have seen. That's been one movie that's been kind of taking the horror world pretty hard lately been hearing a lot about this movie and i just i kind of am inter interested to see what it's about but I, i've heard nothing but good things so here's the synopsis young american dancer Susie bainan arrives in 1970s berlin to audition for the world reowned uh, uh helena marcos dance company when she vaults to the role of lead dancer the woman she replaces breaks down and accuses the company's female directors of witchcraft Meanwhile, an, in, an inquestive uh, psychotherapist and a member of a troop under, uncover dark and sinister secrets as they probe the depths of the studio's hidden underground chambers. Hmm. So, yeah, this movie right here has been taking storm in the horror uh, world right now. I've, and I've seen a lot of people give good reviews about it and stuff like that. And I'm kind of interested in watching it just because of what a lot of people have been saying about it. So... Annihilation. Did you ever see that? That was with uh, Natalie Portman. No, I I didn't watch that one either. That I watched parts of it, and so it, it's pretty trippy. It's like a like a different dimension or something like that. But it was it was pretty trippy. It was okay. Truth or Dare. Not even gonna fucking start talking about that movie. The movie sucked. First Purge. I went to the premiere for that. That was a pretty good movie. Yeah, I like the original Purge, but. I haven't seen really... I don't think I've seen any of the other purges. Election Year was probably one of the best ones, and Anarchy was really good, too. Oh, really? Yeah. First Purge, though, it was pretty good. Um, it take, it, It's a real take on the whole... Um, the movement, uh, you know, against racism and stuff like that. It, that that's a heavy, big time, heavily message in that. Yeah. Uh, you can see that, which was pretty good. But I went, I, I went to the premiere not knowing it. <laughs> I just got free tickets to the thing, and then it just shows up. The producer shows up. Jason Blum, who's pretty well known, Blumhouse Productions, yeah, and all the directors and cast and crew were there, so I was just kind of like, oh, okay, <laughs> guess I'm at the premiere. Yeah, it's pretty cool. The only one that wasn't there, which I was a little sad about, was Marissa Tomein, because I would have tried to grab a picture with her. I don't know who she is. She plays Ant Man, Spider Man. Oh, Homecoming. Oh, huh. she's beautiful. Strangers Pray at Night. That one was good. Again, you've only seen the first one, though, right? Yeah, I've seen the original Strangers, and I loved that movie. Yeah. Um, I wanted to see Prey at Night, but I, I know it's on some streaming service. I have it. And Tony's now pointing to his <laughs> Blu-ray collection. 
my horror Blu Ray collection. Yeah, yeah, I have it. So if one day you want to watch it, we'll watch it. Yeah, it's good. With the alternate ending. Ooh, alternate ending. Uh, the Predator. That one was good. Um, <laughs> I really enjoyed that one. Not a lot of people enjoyed that one, but I, yeah. I, I just like anything sci-fi. Uh, okay, tell me about Slender Man. Oh yeah, Slender Man. I had low expectations walking into that movie, and those expectations were far too high. Uh, that movie was just stupid. It it didn't really do anything to the the lore that is Slender Man. <laughs> Because, like, the video game's scary. Like, the lore in it kind of scary. But, like, the way this one was, it was just kind of like, eh. Like, there was, like, I think it got me jump scared maybe once, twice. I think it had a lot to do with it being PG-13, which uh, pissed off a lot of people. Because I think it was originally slated to be R. Oh, was it? Yeah, but then they, a lot of changes happened with that movie. and Yeah, it wasn't... I would not watch it again. I watched it once, and I was like, okay, like, I watched it. And it just got, st- the way it worked was stupid, like, it was like the ring, but not like the ring at the okay. same time, because it was like a video you had to watch that, like, got you into it. Okay, it was, okay. Yeah. Yeah, because I know that, well, and I was telling my cousin when they when they released this trailer that Sony's just a little too late in the game. If they would have made this movie, like, five years ago, it would have been box office gold. Yeah, 2014 would have been prime for this. 2013, yeah. 2014. It would have been box office gold. Because that was when that Slender Man trend hit. Yeah. Everyone was talking about it. So this that would have been box office gold. But they were a little too late in the game, and that's why it was a box office disaster. Yeah. Um, Unsane, I heard a lot of good reviews about that. And I heard it was shot on an iPhone, I believe. That was a trippy one. The Meg, didn't bother with that. <laughs> didn't want to bother with that. Yeah. Um, Insidious The Last Key. I watched that one. What'd you think? Uh, that one got me a couple times with scares. Uh, it was okay. It was it was good. There was a couple moments where I was like, ooh, what's going to happen? A couple twists and turns, as you see. Like that one moment when she's crawling through and she finds the boxes and things like that. Yeah, and you think it's going to pop out and then something completely different happens. Mm, yeah. Yeah, I saw that movie. The mm-hmm. thing I, I will say that I liked that saved it for me the most was the fact that we got to learn more of Elise's backstory. Oh, yeah, that was pretty sick. Which I, I did th- I enjoyed that the most. And the demon was pretty trippy. Yeah, the demon was trippy. That one moment, because like, they go back to that one moment where like she's in the hallway and then she goes in the room and she thought like she saw someone that like was a ghost or whatever. Yeah. And then you find out that that was a real person. Yeah. Like I was like, oh, dang. Yeah, so... Oh, yeah, 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 you're talking about the, the girl that he kept there. Yeah. Yeah. I thought it was her mom at first, but it was completely, something completely different. Yeah. But yeah, I know which one you were talking about. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the dad tried to say that she was insane and all that, but... Yeah. That was just him. His dad, the dad was creepy. Yeah, so... Yeah, that was insane, but overall, the movie was good. The thing I'm getting pissed off about, though, is they, they keep making these Insidious films. I think that was, like, the fourth film in the franchise. Yeah, it's the fourth one. They still haven't made a follow-up to Insidious 2, which is at the end when the fucking Tucker and Specs go to the door and you see Elisa as a ghost and then she sees something when she walks in. Do you not remember Insidious 2? No, I don't remember Insidious 2. So Insidious 2 at the end, Tucker and Specs, which are the two, you know, investigative journalists and all that. Yeah. Um, they walk in with the, they walk in and, you know, they're doing their thing. They're, they're, they're coming to the case and Elisa's a ghost, so she follows them in. Uh, this girl's just kind of sitting there and stuff like that, and she's not moving and stuff, and she's she's a ghost. She's like, I'm here to talk to you. What's wrong? And then she looks up, and she gets all scared. She goes, oh, my God, and then it just ends. Oh, wow. And they never, like, okay, I, and that was supposed to be, like, the next thing. And so when Insidious 3 came out, it was, like. A prequel. A prequel. It was, like, a, I think, a, like, a couple hours or so before that, or it was, like, during Insidious 1 where she was doing back-to-back cases or something like that. And then Insidious 4 was another prequel. Yeah, but I liked how it connected back to the original one, which was yeah. cool to me. But I just wish that they would go back to Insidious 2 and tell off that story now. Like, yeah. Tucker and Specs with Elise as a ghost would be pretty cool to kind of see, like, they're still working with each other and stuff like that. They can still communicate with Elise. is pretty cool. That would be pretty cool. But yeah, it would be really cool. I, 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 I'm just kind of hoping they do that. Uh, Overlord? Did you see Overlord? No, I didn't see Overlord. Overlord was good. Overall, it was really good. Now, a lot of people were thinking, because this year they came out with the Cloverfield Paradox. Yeah. Which we'll get to in a second. That's another movie that kind of just dropped unexpectedly, another horror. But uh, me and my cousin were diehard Cloverfield fans, you know, and we thought that this movie was a... They were being very, they were being very secretive about this movie, 
And when it finally came out, we were like, oh, it's going to be a Cloverfield movie. We went to go see it. And I will say, even though it wasn't a Cloverfield movie, we weren't disappointed. Yeah. It was a very good movie. Um, very very well much enjoyed it. Uh-huh. Um, due to the fact that uh, it takes uh, part on the uh, on the uh, conspiracy theory of uh, the Nazis working on superhumans. Yeah. Um, that's what this movie's supposed to be about, and I really enjoyed it. Really enjoyed myself. We saw it in Dolby too. So oh, that must have been crazy, dude. The the beginning scene, they're in the planes mm-hmm. and shit, and they're shooting around and shit, and the fucking RC were vibrating. It felt like we were actually on the plane with them, dude. That's cool. Yeah, so it, it was pretty good. Venom? Did you watch Venom? No. Venom was good. I didn't, I didn't watch it because I heard it had bad reviews, and I was like, I don't know if I want to spend the time to watch this. I enjoyed Venom. I really liked it. Coming from a comic book guy, dude, I I enjoyed it. Um. I thought it was really good, and I, I really, really enjoyed it. Um, it was like another Marvel. It was just cool to see Venom on the big screen. Yeah, no, definitely. I think I, I think I, I had wanted to see it as like I wanted to see it, but I wasn't part of. I know I'm part of the AMC, whatever that thing's called. A list program. A list, yeah. I um, mean, so now I can watch more movies, but I was in that transitionary period from. Having movie pass to not having movie pass anymore, yeah, and then having friends that kind of wanted to go to the movies but not really like committed a hundred percent to going to the movies, yeah. And so I, I was kind of in that I don't know. So if I was gonna watch a movie, I really had to wanted to see that movie, mm-hmm. and that's why Venom kind of slipped through the cracks. With yeah, me. And I, I really enjoyed Venom though, and I think it got a lot of shit, but uh, it was it was good. Uh, Cloverfield Paradox was pretty good this year too. Yeah, uh, that dropped at the beginning of the year, right? Yeah, it dropped actually right after the Super Bowl. Oh, right after the Super Bowl, yeah. Because they released it, the first trailer during the Super Bowl, and then right after that it said coming very soon, and then so we went on Netflix, and then it said dropping right after the big game, and we were we lost our shit because we've been waiting for another Cloverfield movie since 10 Cloverfield Lane. Yeah. So it, it was insane. That, that was a good movie. Um, Hellfest. That was an amazing movie up until the end. Was that the one Rooster Teeth did? No, that was Bloodfest. Oh, Bloodfest, yeah. Hellfest, Hellfest, a... Bloodfest, all kinds yeah. of fests. Hellfest was about uh, a haunt that went uh, nationally, and um, there was this guy who was a serial killer who would dress up as some of the haunt actors and uh-huh. go around killing just random guests. Oh, wow. And it was really good. It really took a, a toll on the haunt. Uh, in general, and it came out in a perfect time. It came around right when haunt season was starting. Oh yeah, right when yeah. So it was good. Uh, I, I I know Six Flags capital tried to capitalize on it. Six Flags did do a maze based off Hellfest, which was perfect for them because they had like the theme park kind of setting for it. Yeah, which I thought was awesome. Uh, but and this is gonna be spoilers for Hellfest. The ending fucking pissed me off. Well, what happened? So, of course, he, you know, the killer gets away and everything like that. They, they kind of outsmart the killer and stuff like that. And they thought they killed him or knocked him out unconscious and stuff. And he ends up getting away. Then you find out, of course, he escaped and goes back. So, you know, you see this van pull up to this house, goes into this garage and puts away his weapon, his mask. So he's got a bunch of different masks and costumes and stuff like that. The killer. Then he goes inside and he's holding something and you think he's going to kill someone and then he, you see he goes back to his daughter. You don't see the guy's face or anything, but he goes to his daughter and gives him like a teddy bear and shit like that and then the movie just ends. It's like, he's seriously going to end the fucking movie like that. Wait, so you don't find out who the killer is either? You don't find out who the killer is. You don't, I mean, I just think they could have ended it way better. Well, I think it just leaves a... Just, it, well, it, it, it also is one of those endings where it's like, this is just a normal guy. Yeah, just doing random killings. You know? A normal guy, yeah, doing random killings, but it also may lead to Hellfest too. I don't know. I hope not. <laughs> I mean, Hellfest one was just enough. Uh, and that's gonna do it for really. I mean, there's a lot more we could talk about, but you know, that's just really gonna do it for that. Um, so yeah, guys, thank you for listening to another podcast. We were just talking about some of the best horror movies and worst horror movies of 2018. Sammy has not seen a lot of them, so I gotta educate him. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I, I'm gonna now that I'm doing this, I gotta keep an eye out on that horror game and see what's yeah. going down. Yep. Uh, probably gonna watch Happy Death Day pretty soon just to get you educated on that. Yeah, no, definitely. I mean, based on if the if it was just like the trailer showed, I'm gonna be interested in it. Um, definitely, definitely. Yeah, but it's gonna be good. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that is gonna do it today for the Mindless Horror Podcast. We. 
are your boys, Sam and Anthony, and that is another wrap for another podcast. We will see you guys next week, and I hope you guys enjoyed this podcast. Bye. Bye-bye.